What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Catfish Season 6, Episode 6, Mecca and Tanner. Okay, we're going to make this as quick as possible because it's 1230 and I'm trying to go to bed. Okay, I got to go to work in the morning. But um, anyway, so this episode was about dumb teens. I just had to put it out there like that. But it was also about, you know, people trying to find themselves because they're young, you know, they're still trying to find themselves. And that's the only, the only thing that's really stopping me from going all the way in is because they're young. And I can tell the shit wasn't malicious, malicious, but, you know, given the circumstances, but it's going to be a part that I'm going to have to go in on. Um, This girl, Mecca, she's 18, 19 years old. She's been talking to this person named Tanner for the past five years, okay? So, according to her, what she said happened, she was on Facebook. This girl named T Taylor uh, messaged her, said that her cousin Ryan said that she was cute and could he have her number. I'm sitting here like, bitch, hell fucking no. Mind you, I have to keep in mind that they are only 13 at the time. And I'm sitting here like, why the fuck? So, I said, you know what? See, this is when the rules of Facebook changed, okay? If this was Facebook. This is the rules when, when they changed. Because back in the day, when I graduated, I graduated from high school in 2005. And, you know, um, that's when Facebook really got popping. In fact, that was back in the day when Facebook first started. Facebook was just for the college kids, okay? You literally had to have a college um, login. You had to have a college email to log in onto, um, you know, Facebook. You couldn't get, if you was a teenager, if you was a kid, you couldn't get on Facebook. It wasn't for that. It was for adults, okay? Then all of a sudden, in the midst of college, it just became for everybody. So I'm just sitting here like, see if they still had that rule up, you know, because they can determine whether or not it's a legit uh, college email or whatever. But anyway, they 13 years old playing on the fucking internet. Parents ain't around. You trying to hook up with people. You could have been on to catch a goddamn predator, bitch. That could have been somebody posing as a grown-ass man posing as a, ch uh, a, a child, okay, trying to talk to children or whatever. That is one of the dangers and one of the things that I was not here for about this episode. And they didn't, I'm, su I'm surprised people didn't say something like that. Even when Mecca Mama was on there, you know, she didn't even say nothing like that. She's so concerned about who is this person that was talking to her daughter and, and getting her so involved for the past five months. They owe her um, answers and stuff. I'm sitting here like, Mama, where the hell was you at? Okay? You wasn't um, monitoring her stuff. These people, these predators are out here. Anything could have happened to your child. Okay? 13 years old. Come on now. And then, you know... The girl talked about something her cousin wanted to talk to her. Bitch, why your cousin couldn't contact me? Okay, well, I don't even fucking know you to give you out my number and then you want to hook me up with your cousin. Girl, please, I don't know none of you. I got to see a picture first. I said that's the wrong mistake, okay? But your kids, you're probably in the midst of puberty and all that shit. So, of course, the hormones are just jumping out of control. You know, I want to have this boy like me. I want to have this girl like me. So, that's what's going on. All right? So, she went on ahead, looked at the picture. We see this redhead guy. And, you know, she was like, oh, my God, he's so hot. And I said, oh, my God, no, he's not. All right? He was okay, but he went like that. And so she gave him the number. Gave her the number. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, Jesus. And I have to keep in mind, 13, that 13, that 13 at the time. Okay? And so, you know, they started talking. She said in a couple of weeks or so, they was talking um, nonstop. And they saying, I love you to each other. And I said, they're 13. they 13. This is puppy love. They don't know what the fuck love is. They're 13. And so... All of a sudden, Ryan wants to come out a couple of years later, I believe, and say, I'm not really Ryan, I'm Tanner. Okay, and I said, at this point, they 15, they 15, they 15, they still dumb as shit, bitch. They still dumb as shit, all right? She said the boy helped her get through some of the things that she was going through at school. And I understand that. She said she was being bullied, but I don't know what bullied is. I mean, i never been bullied, but I understand having somebody you know, who's there in your corner that's being there for you and, and, and giving you advice and, you know, being that shoulder or that person that you can talk to and get your feelings out about stuff that's going on that's hurting you, okay? That's what a lot of people need. So in that instance, I was glad that she had the person, but still, they young as fuck, all right? And um, 
I get to the point where she wanted to video chat. Okay. Stuff always happened. And they text and I think they talked on the phone maybe. And then, you know, they tried to video chat one time. And um, when you get on the video, it's this figure and it's like hoodie that's all the way down to the nose and in the dark and you can't really see the face and then you can barely hear then it cuts out and then the person he calls talk about something i was trying to get in contact with you all day and he was like no i just got through um chatting with you or trying to video chat with you or whatever oh i must have been hacked bitch who the fuck are you to hack that's what i want to know but okay and so then that's when he want to come clean and say his name ain't ryan he's really tanner and he's not the person in the, um profile picture Okay, fine. He shows another picture. And she's like, all right, whatever. But the whole thing is she wants to know who it is that's, you know, she's been talking to for the past four months. I mean, five years, I should say. So, you know, Neve is still on paternity leave. They bring in Io. If you ever seen the suspect show with um, Neve, that was actually good. I actually liked that, you know. But, um, and Io was the co-star on there, the co-host or whatever. That was real cute. I hope they bring that back for a second season. I can watch that all day, you know, because that's so much better than this damn catfish, to be quite honest. Um, some people was doing some shady shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> y'all, if y'all seen the one when the uh, girl thought that her friend was a stripper, her friend or her sister was a stripper, but she was actually up there trying to do some music and trying to keep it on the low low. I said, girl, get out of here. But, um, anyway... So, they doing all this stuff. They go do the configuration. Uh, we already know that that picture that they showed us wasn't real. They go through the phone number. They find, mind you, they already in Florida, okay? Um, they find out that the person that the phone number belongs to is in da in Texas, okay? And um, I think in Dallas, all right? So, they look at Taylor Page. They trying to figure out who the hell this is, okay? So, they look up her stuff, uh, the Tanner page or whatever, and then they see this link to this um club. It was her QLGBT, you know? And I was like, mm, this, this lesbian, gay, you know, club or whatever. And she was like, let me click on this. And the whole time, Io was saying, maybe it's a lesbian, okay? It's so many things that's pointing to the fact that this got to be a lesbian. Io knew, okay? And the first thing, and I said the exact same thing. I said, unless he that type of person, you know, this puppy love and he a little uh, clingy or whatever, this got to be a female because who talks on the phone that long like that <laughs> every day? <laughs> but then again, I had to say, what did make me say that 100% is because they were kids, so it's fresh. So, you know, kids do stuff. So that kind of was stuck in the back of my mind. And then I.L. said, and I was like, yup, you right. Because, bitch, we'll get on the phone and start. If we really into you, we'll talk to you for, like, 15 hours each day, okay? We will be talking to you throughout the whole goddamn day if we really into you, okay? But, um, lesbians for you. Let, ooh, ooh, let me, let me not do that. Let me not do that. Because, you know, according to somebody, like somebody said in a comment on my other one, I, 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 um, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I, I say something about the gay men or some shit like that. Like, I'm really not here for them in the way that I... Girl, a bit... Y'all so goddamn sensitive. If I'm saying something just because I said last week um about, you know, the person being in a relationship for, like, a couple of months or something that's, like, um no, three years, talking for three years, that's, like, five years and gay years or whatever. Baby, I'm saying that shit because that, that's what um happens, all right? You could be a gay man and you can feel like, you know, because it is a stereotype out there that um gay men, tr they don't really do relationships. That's a stereotype that's false because I know gay men that are in relationship but i also know that sometimes that is a little bit true for some gay men they don't do relationship and after they get to a certain point it's over and done with it do seem like it's been years okay you see somebody that's gay whatever and they in a relationship for a few a couple of months or so you like damn i ain't know it was gonna last that long and i only say the shit like that is because i seen it and i experienced it okay that don't mean that i'm coming at gay people when i'm not bitch i'm part of the lgbt and i'm the main one that always be up here standing up for my gay brothers and my gay sisters so Get the fuck out of here with that sensitive shit. And no, I'm not taking shit back. And if you feel like you in your feelings about it and you still got something else to say, you can keep it. You can keep it. I don't care if you say you've been, you know. And then they always throw this. I'm a supporter. I've been watching forever. Well, if you've been watching forever, then you know. 
you know, okay? Like, whatever. God damn. I just had to, because we on some gay shit. All right, ooh, let me not say that, because then I'm putting down, and I be talking, you know, down about this. Ugh, what the fuck ever. I say what the fuck I say, and I meant it, okay? You know, if you don't like what I, click off, okay? Any fucking way. Any fuck, I'm sorry. I just had to go on a tangent, because I seen that coming. I was like, it's always that one. Always that goddamn one. But moving the fuck on, I don't even remember what the fuck I was saying. Oh, you know, let's play a um, fucking more um um goddamn stereotype. Lesbians and fucking you hauling, okay? You meet a lesbian bitch, just like they say we gave men, being in a relationship a couple months is like damn near years, all right? That's a whole bunch of years in gay terms. Bitch, being with a, 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 a lesbian get together, bitch, they already moving in in a couple of weeks, okay? Shit do be happening, bitch, all right? Trust and believe, I know, okay? Listen, listen. Some of the stuff, if it don't pertain to you, you shouldn't get offended by it. Anyway, moving on from that, um, you know, so she liked the dude playing, okay? So do we see the LGBT club, whatever, that again. And then all of a sudden, we see her picture, we see her posting, and she was like, hold the fuck up. I'm straight, okay? I'm straight. I don't know what this is, and I'm not gay. What is this? You want to hook up? You want to talk? You want to do? Girl, what the hell is this? That is not me, and it was an old picture of her, and they was like, this was from four years ago. You don't remember posting it? She was like, I don't remember posting it because I didn't post it. They was like, so the person that you talking to is out here catfishing other people with your shit. I said, oh my God, what type of bullshit is this? Kiss my ass. What type of bullshit is this? Okay? You know? So after that, they go look at the phone number. This is when they find the address and all this stuff. So they decided to um, look at Taylor's page. And it was this person on, they couldn't really find no pictures. Okay. Besides the profile picture, you know, Taylor looked like, um, <laughs> some little girl, little house on a prairie or something, you know, very innocent or whatever, taking a class photo like this. Okay. And it was just like, girl, okay. You know, we see you some landscapes where your other pictures. Then they see this new post that was kind of recent, like in the past couple of days from this girl named Lakeisha. I said, so Taylor black. No, the girl just black. I was like, all right. Mm -mm. Um, Lakeisha was like, girl, we need you to come in because so-and-so couldn't make the shift. So we need you to come in. And so they was like, let's contact Lakeisha. They sent her a message. She called back and was talking about how, yes, she know Taylor. Um, Taylor's a real person. She works with her. You know, she always talking about her boy cousins and stuff like that. But she likes boys as much as I know. I don't know. You know, it is what it is. So then they sent a the message to Taylor. Okay. Taylor texts them back, calls them back or whatever, trying to say, um, well, Taylor calls back or somebody called back and it really wasn't Taylor. It was Tanner. It was like, wait a minute. We called Taylor. How did you get the number? I know you called Taylor, but, you know, Taylor gave me your number, so I went, home, I went on ahead and called you. And, you know, this is about Mecca, right? And I know she want to see me and all that stuff, but I'm just scared. And, you know, with some stuff that's going on that I ain't really ready to reveal and all that stuff. And, yes, I'm a boy and all this. And I was just sitting here like, oh, okay. And I'm listening to the voice. And I'm like, now you have some men who have, Especially when you're young, you know, you're still trying to get your voice in order. You know, sometimes people blossom late. Sometimes people blossom early. And sometimes once they go ahead and blossom and they through, their voice may or may not be what you may perceive to be a manly tone or whatever. What society may mean, be a manly tone. It could be soft and subtle or whatever. And then same thing with some females. They could have, you know, more, more of a rub. Like with my voice, I can go low. I can go high. I can go in the middle, okay? Depending on what time I wake up or, or how I feel in the middle of the day, my shit can be deep as fuck, okay? Deep as fuck, bitch. All right? You know, shit like that. But you can clearly tell I'm listening to this voice and I'm like, this person is trying to either make their voice deep or doing something with it, but it's not their original voice, okay? And I appreciate the fact that Aya was like, they have a unisex voice. And I said, that's exactly what it is, unisex, because you can't really tell, okay? I said, you know, that's a good point. I like when they first came over and Max was like, so what's your preferred pronoun, okay? I was like, all right, y'all starting this shit off nice. But, um, you know, they take this information to... um. Mecca. She was with her parents on a little food truck. Her mama come and sit down. They telling them all this information. And before they found this out, Io was like, either this person is a lesbian 
you know, trying to figure things out or is a girl who is transitioning into a guy from Taylor to Tanner, okay, a transgender or just some other stuff is going on. So this is the information that they sent to the moms in um, Mecca and all this stuff. And I was surprised mom, you know, mom was just wanting to know what the fuck was going on. So she got a free trip to go to Texas, okay. And so they finally get down there. Tanner calls, well, at first she was scared. Everybody's scared to see who it is, okay? Then um, they already down there. They get the information where it's supposed to be at. Then Tanner, you know, instead of calling, FaceTimes them. And so it was like, oh, my God, we never had anybody FaceTime us. I was like, calm down, okay? Answer it before it um, hang up. Once again, this person is on FaceTime. I said, what was the point of FaceTiming, baby? You could have just called if you was going to do this, okay? We thinking we going to see the person's face. No, baby, it's in a um, hoodie all the way down to the nose, and you couldn't see nothing in the light. The light all dimmed up and everything. You couldn't see shit. And I said, that's a girl. That's a girl. That's Taylor right there. I figured it out once she opened up her mouth on the phone. I said, that's Taylor. That is Taylor. You know, she was like, I'm scared, but you know, I am a boy. I am a boy. She made sure. She just kept making sure that she said that. All right. But eventually they went on ahead and he gave us, um, Tanner gave us an address about where to meet them at and all that stuff. So they get to the house the next day or later that day and Oh my god, I'm so scared. I don't I don't I don't think I can do this. Well, can you just open up the door? Let me come in and talk or whatever. Crack the door. Can you just come on out? I mean, the sooner you get it done, you can get it over with and you can just go about your day and everything could be all good. So, Tanner comes out in a hoodie. In this hoodie, the same hoodie. And Tanner is really Taylor, all right? And so, when they get into the conversation about why she did what she did, Mainly it's because she is a lesbian, all right? You living in this town in Texas that's very, very close-minded, very, very much about the Bible, Christianity, and things of that such, and people throw a lot of judgment, and she's living in fear about, you know, coming out, okay? She wasn't ready. She don't know how to do that, and Max had to put it out there. Well, you do realize that this is on TV, and, you know, you're essentially about to come out right now, and your parents will see this if they watch this, and I'm like, okay, you know? And what got me and what fucked me up and what I start to lose a little bit of respect for uh, Tanner because I can understand the struggles that especially younger pe um, people in the LGBT community go through when they are young and they realize that, hey, I am different. I feel different. I see my friend who is a female who is attracted to a male and I'm thinking I'm supposed to do the same thing, but for some reason, I'm more so attracted to my female friend and not that male. And I'm attracted to other females that's coming around. Or, you know, I'm a male that's attracted to another male, or I'm attracted to both. I'm not, I'm confused at what's going on. And then you realize that you're gay, you're lesbian, you're bisexual, you're probably transgender, okay? Queer, whatever, you're that, all right? And you don't know how to come out with that because you don't know how your parents or people will take it. You know, that fear of being judged, that fear of being ridiculed, that fear of being disowned and shunned away, you know, that fear of being attacked, okay? Especially from a heavily, heavily Christian or religious family or religious town, you got that fear of being looked down upon and disowned and cast out, okay? And so some people struggle with this, especially the young ones. They keep it in sometimes until they're old enough to leave. And then they live their life. And that's what it feels like it was going on with Tanner. So I understand that struggle. I mean, I was never like that. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't come out until I was 18. That's when I was really, really sure. Okay, I knew what it was, but I just wasn't ready to come out yet. So I came out at 18, and I didn't have anything to worry about. But I was fortunate to have that case. But not everybody is. So... I'm sitting here like, all right, I get that part. Even they understanding it, okay? And all of a sudden, Mega was like, so why would you put me in this group? You know I ain't gay. Why you playing with my pictures? Um, I don't remember doing that. I could have did that, but I don't remember. It was such a long time ago. That's when I said, Tana, stop playing. 
Taylor, it is time to come clean with all this shit. Stop it. Girl, do you know this bitch was up there and I had to call her this. I had to call Taylor, bitch. I had to call you a bitch because you was fucked up for this. You up here talking about, they said when they was having conversations, it got to a point that every other week somebody in her family was dying. Nobody was dying. Then she said it was really true that her friends was died of suicide because, you know, people, you know, coming out in a judgment and all that stuff. I was there for, I was like, that's understandable because shit like that does really happen and it's very unfortunate. You could have had this as a teachable moment, okay? But bitch, when they left, they left. She called them on the phone and said, okay, everything that I've been saying about how I feel, that's true. But I did lie about one more thing. None of my friends died. I said, you don't play with shit. Like, uh, I can't stand when people do that. When people get on here and they faking cancer, they faking an illness to get sympathy. They faking that people in their family died. They faking that people committed suicide. What the fuck is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Anybody who do that, you are trash. Okay, Chell, you was trash in that moment. I don't care how old you are. That is nothing that you play with. I don't care what you're going through. That is nothing that you play with because you do not know who the next person, what the next person is going through or if they experience something like that. And sure enough, Mecca said, bitch, I had a couple of friends that committed suicide too in real life and you up here lying about it. So I really wasn't here for it. You know, they came back and they talked and all that stuff. And she was saying the same thing about, you know, not coming out and all that stuff. And woo, 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 she wanted to be friends and all that. And, you know, Mecca had to make sure that she knew that she wasn't gay, okay? I don't like girls. I like dick, okay? Um, hey, it is what it is. And <laughs> she was like, I understand that. I just wish, you know, there's a lot of people that left my life. I want you to stay as friends. But as we saw... Uh, with the two months update, Mecca said, bitch, I ain't playing around on the internet. I ain't trying to date. I'm focusing on me and school and all that stuff. And me and Taylor haven't even talked, okay? And I tried to reach out, but, you know, no answer. Hopefully one day we'll get to be cool again like that. And they couldn't even reach Taylor. I hope Taylor is okay. I really do, okay? Because you just never know. But, y'all, that was Catfish. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And excuse my little rant earlier, but... I meant what I said, okay? It is what it is. I'll see y'all later. Peace.